my name is Amanda Calhoun, and I'm a ceramic artist. I work mostly in tile. Um, I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas, and I got my start in a handmade tile studio in downtown Corpus Christi called Allo Tile Works. I started working there in 1999 and worked there for about 14 years and learned the whole process of making clay and making tile, rolling out tile, cutting the clay, etching, make, doing design work, pretty much the whole shebang of um, tile making. In, in 2013, I moved to Alpine, Texas, and I had to figure out my own way of getting in, back into clay. I have a few different inspirations. Um, one, uh, starting out, is uh, definitely Carmen Miranda. Like most people, like think of her. She has the like the all the fruit on top of her head. She's a dancer. Um, she's in the movies uh, Brazilian. Just a really like iconic look, and I've always been inspired by that. And also Marie Antoinette with her big wigs and all the crazy things. I see them as theatrical, very theatrical. And if I were to costume design, these might be some headdresses for a musical or something. So that's one thing that um, inspires me. And then for each girl, um, I've been inspired by a specific person in my life. So I'm thinking of the strong women in my life and, and they all influence me. And these, the imagery for each one directly relates to um, each lady in my life and um, things that they like, things I think of when I think of them. And so it's kind of their tribute pieces in a way for, for them. My mom is an artist, and so I grew up with my mom constantly making and constantly producing. And she changed mediums. Like, she was doing all kinds of different things, but there was something about them all, and it was color. And she used the brightest, craziest colors, so I really feel like she influenced me a lot in that way, for sure, and imagery as well. The process, so I'm going to start out with, I do a small drawing for these larger pieces. I start out small, and I trace it onto mylar, and then I project it onto the wall where I tape a big piece of paper. Uh, I've been using butcher paper, but it doesn't really matter what kind of paper, I don't think. Um, and I trace the design onto the butcher paper, and then I lay it out on the on a table and I figure out where my cuts are going to be for each individual piece. So I need to, I know it's too big, I don't want to do it all together as one, I want, to, I want it to be separate pieces. So um, that, at that point I'm figuring out where I want to make my cuts. And then I cut it, each piece out with an X-Acto knife and I have my individual pieces. And then I roll out a slab of clay and I cut out rough cuts using these pieces of paper, put them down on the clay, cut kind of around it, and then I could take it to a banding wheel and cut them individually, and I trace the design on top of the paper, and so it leaves an impression in the clay. I cut them out, I put them all together onto one board, make sure everything fits well, as, as best as possible, and if there's any issues, at that point I can cut more off, that sort of thing, to get it to fit. So once I have it all placed together, then I can go in and start etching her as a whole. So like getting into some of these lines, doing the etching around there. But I like to work it on it as a whole because I can see what's going on the entire piece, you know, the whole way through it from this point on. Um, and then I will, since I'm using red clay as my base, I will, the parts that I'm going to put, the bright colors, I put a white slip base down, and I usually am doing two coats of white slip, um, just brushed on, and I kind of think of it as painting, like, 
So you, I, you know, I want the brush strokes to kind of make sense with whatever it is that I'm painting at that point. And then it will go, it will dry and it'll get bisqued to cone 04, which is kind of like your normal bisque wear. And then I will go in and paint it with the colored glazes. Very fun. Very much like just painting a painting on a canvas. And I do it once again as a whole so I can see what's going on the whole time with the entire piece. And um, these, I use commercial glazes, I use Mako glaze, and you have to have two to three coats of each color on there. So usually I'll start out with a base of the lighter green, and for instance, um, and do three coats and then I'll go on top of it and do some extra coats of color. And then it gets glazed and fired and um, and then it comes out and then I am cutting out board backings, painting them bright colors and then gluing them onto the board. And that is the, that's the whole process. I think of them though as dreamscapes. I think of them as being these dreamy ideas, these that are, you know, coming out of our heads. Um, and so dreams, as far as like the possibilities are endless, I think. So that is one reason why the faces are matte and raw clay. Well, these dreamscapes are bright colors, shiny. That It's like I'm trying to talk about the dreaminess and the possibilities and, and the spectacular, like, you know, we can make dreams, like, happen. That's what we're all trying to do is make our dreams happen. And I think it's possible. I think, to me, these are just really, I think I'm going with really super, like, recognizable imagery that kind of anybody can like relate to and feel comfortable with and like ah, I know what that is you know I I want anything that I'm doing artistically I want I don't want it to be a mystery I want it to be like for anyone and everyone like to know you know I know what that is like I love that idea like it just it can relate to anyone